Hey the vast me mateys, and welcome aboard this week I'm learning, the podcast where me and me hearty scallywag of a crew plunder our week for the best of what we've learned, then share that fine booty with all of you wonderful land lovers. This be episode 80, recorded February 28th, 2022, and we have a fine discussion episode for you all today. One guess at the topic. I'm your host, Brendan Vader, also known as Captain Dracanis. Down below me, we have Seeker4761, also known as Colton Roper. Next to him, we have Also Tim in Ryan. the hole. <laughs> <laughs> also in the hole. Be lucky you be not keel hauled. <laughs> uh, Tim Rind, also known as Fake Frang. Above him and next to me, we have... Tyler Edom, also known as Junebug, and then in the far corner, and at the end, because he is being punished for something or other, who knows. Look at that smile, you know he's guilty. <laughs> we have Psychonitris, also known as Cody Stratton. So yeah, uh, piracy. Piracy is yeah. what we're talking about. And uh, yeah, mostly like digital piracy obviously because I, I don't know anything about the current pirate <laughs> Somalian yeah. piracy or the Straits yeah, of Malacca how, how are they Somalian doing piracy. today <laughs> that's that's not do what you I, have I, an I oil tank. tanker and are you traversing <laughs> the Strait of Malacca well this is not the podcast for you just bring a lot I of mean weapons. it's we're still interesting and funny. Just maybe look for information on that specific thing elsewhere. <laughs> Try to be interesting and funny. Maybe. We'll get there. We're getting there. <laughs> Another 80 episodes. We'll get there, boys. Yeah. <laughs> it's so... like those video games that it's like, hey, it'll get better after 100 hours. I don't want <laughs> to why, why get there for 100, 100 fucking hours. hours. Could we skip Could to that point, please? Do we, do we have as many <laughs> listeners as we have podcasts produced? Right now we have I, as many listeners uh, as people on this show. Right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I would say that's accurate. <laughs> At least uh, consistent. Okay. okay. So anyway, so, digital right. piracy. And, and uh, one interesting point I'd like to hear everybody's thoughts on is uh, a couple weeks back when Linus Tech Tips while well, Linus Sebastian on the WAN show uh called out that that ad blocking is piracy i'd be curious to see where everyone here stands on that it's an interesting take but this this attitude leads down a a long weird ro you know rabbit hole rodent hole rabbit hole of like are we considering people's time and how they use it piracy? Now, granted, so getting well, so I guess I think we need to establish what what it was Linus yeah. said is piracy. So, if I remember correctly, his argument is it is technically piracy if you have an ad blocker because if you're watching a free vi YouTube video, which you don't have to pay for if you're not doing the premium or anything, and you do not watch the ads you are essentially taking the content without paying the fee for it, which in his argument was, is, is the ad itself because that's how, that's how the, the YouTube will make money is through <coughs> that ad. So technically, according to him, you are pirating content because you were not paying for said content in any way. Mm -hmm. And, and, saying and I tend you, to agree. If you bypass the <laughs> paywall at like, New York Times or anything like that. I mean, the the interesting thing of uh, if it's not, I mean, if you if you don't believe it's piracy, what else would that be? It's it's something. I mean, the yeah. the the relationship between the content consumer and the content creator is is pretty clear in that state in that stage, at least through uh -huh. YouTube. I mean. What else could it possibly be? What happens if you're re-watching a video? So you've already watched it once with the ads, and then you're watching it again with an ad blocker. 
Technically, so yes. Yeah, done, because done. you're still. you're basically paying paying for the upkeep of that video to stay on. So YouTube is and web content is pay per view. Yep. Technically, yes. Because doesn't the ads will rotate every time. Like if you go to any standard website and then you go back a couple days later, those ads are going to change even if you go to the exact same page. Yeah, especially it's and even if it's the same the ad, it doesn't again. it doesn't matter because regardless if if you watch that ad, the YouTube creator will, if they're monetized, will get revenue for it. Whether it's they have the same ad a million times or once, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. If 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 the if the transaction doesn't happen, then there's there then you're taking it by definition. Now we can get into the moral argument of that which is a whole nother thing, but at least from a yes. YouTube perspective, that's, that's kind of how that relationship goes. If you're so talking with general it... web content, now it gets a little more interesting. Well, even Spotify, even Spotify, the free version of Spotify, they, you get around, you get that content because you're listening to commercials. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is and being again, you, delivered you same concept is, is being delivered the ad the point in which the transaction is complete or is it your you your time is when the transaction it, is complete your exposure to your if you're to yeah that. is the artist being paid an exposure here <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm just saying i mean <laughs> <laughs> and like, we have yeah so you, you'll make a video you'll have favorite. billions of Got views and a lot of people will like it and you know what that gives it warm fuzzies inside because that's the, what the world runs on is warm fuzzies. So, which I wish it did. I think it'd be a better system, but that's just me. <laughs> so the, the, the problem would say, that we have is a we haven't defined the actual piracy, and as far as the U.S. government's concerned, it is copying and distributing the material without an educational purpose. Um, if you look at on um, Facebook, there is a ton of creators that will literally grab videos from YouTube, yeah. splice yeah. it into their own, and then at the very, very tiny bottom, they're like, oh, we got this from so-and-so. Um, but so-and-so will or, never or get the credit for that watch on YouTube. Hmm. But What's Facebook interesting says about that's that perfectly okay. Indian, Indian web pages that, that, that seem to, to do that, they'll promote this stuff as their, as their own they won't even give any credit to the to the youtuber yeah right and that's 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 kind of that would be arguably a different thing than what we're talking about because mm -mm. they yeah, someone is taking hang on hang on pirate. yeah i mean sorry yeah, let me finish my thought to make sure we're, we're on the same page here but if if you're taking someone's content and monetizing it for yourself that is a mm. different no that is literally the different move of no 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 it Compared to a person consuming it for themselves, arguably. Oh. That is a different type of transaction. In no, it's in the same. <laughs> well, that's outright theft. <laughs> well, but, I mean, but piracy is theft. Well, again, yeah, piracy is theft, too. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, no, I, I, and again, well, if it's not and if it's not piracy, what, what Linus, sorry, I keep interrupting you, Brandon. Go ahead. That's fine. Um, I was just going to bring up, so piracy is defined as the unauthorized use or reproduction of another's work. So in that case, that YouTube video that is monetized, that plays ads, that is ex your expected use is to watch the ads, at least until the skip, skip ad comes up, mm -hmm. because that's how it's designed. The intended use and design is that you go through those ads, you can skip if it says skip, and watch the content that way. By avoiding the ads, you are not fully using that video in the intended way that that creator put it up to be. So having something that would automatically, as soon as the skip ad thing comes up, skips the ad, would be okay. Yep. As long as you watch that first, you know, 10, 15 seconds of the ad. Five seconds, usually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's part of the delivery here system. have gotten really creative at having the full ad in those 15 seconds, by the way. I've, I've been impressed with the mm -hmm. tie ads. Uh, 
as an aside. <laughs> the U.S. side, it's still three-minute ads to an hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. You get on something. On actual TV. Yeah. yeah. Every once in a while, I'll watch one of the three-minute tie ads because they're Super Bowl-level amusing. Um, sorry, I'm going on a l- That doesn't tangent. take much. That yeah. doesn't take much after this year's <laughs> Super Bowl ads. Uh, my... My teacher bouncing QR code. My my teacher would like asked me why people watch are so crazy about Super Bowl ads, and I couldn't explain it because the ads in Thailand are basically all equivalent to Super Bowl ads in the U.S. So it was a weird conversation. Anyway, sorry to go off on that tangent, but. Yeah, it's interesting to know. Okay, so so I think we probably have that kind of settled. That hitting that to the point of the skip ad button is the point in which that then would not be piracy because you are not using that in an unintended use case. Well, Correct. Yes and no, because you still have the DMCA that gives you a safe harbor for educational purposes and for personal use. Right, but I don't think you can monetize educational purposes because that's not that's educational, not business purposes. That's different. That's a different thing entirely. But if if they make a video about something and then you wanted to show it to a class, that is an educational purpose that you're using, regardless of how they originally intended it to be used. So really, since anything's being used personally on YouTube, that would or or if you were you know showing the video and front of a group people you know learning then technically you could skip all of the ads with an ad blocker and it wouldn't be a problem no they'll still complain because they didn't get the hits for it or they didn't get the ad revenue for it all alliance was caring about was the money he wasn't caring about the actual how is this law written and how is it affecting things to him i didn't get money for this Therefore, it is piracy, not, oh, well, here's the, all of the cases that could have happened. So I have a, a counterpoint to that. So if we're, if we're saying that piracy would be legal for personal use, because D- DMCA law, personal use, is uh, omitted, is what you said, right, Tyler? Yep. So then if... I go and download, I don't know, Fantasia 2000 from Disney, and I'm only using it for myself. According to the DMCA, I wouldn't be subject to fines or penalties because it's personal use. I'd have to read the exact fine print, but I believe that is exactly what it is. They always go over someone that is distributing it. They don't usually go after the actual person that downloaded it. Um, but if you're downloading it using a BitTorrent protocol, there's a chance that you're actually uploading it to someone else, and therefore they'll get you on that. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. we could have a whole conversation on the music industry on that that <laughs> side as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of a big. I'll, I'll give you the big... short version. <laughs> I'll give you the the qu- quick short version. They claim they are losing money. They have zero graphs that will actually show you. Here's how much revenue we made. Here's when the technology started, and here's where technologies ended. And you will not be able to distribute anything that that makes sense. Also, be be able to correlate anything that makes sense to it. Uh, Torrent Freak did it like uh, 10 or 20 years ago where they overlaid. Here's when BitTorrent started. Here's when Napster started. And there was one other protocol that started. And there is no drop or spike of their revenue increase. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually something that I I wanted to kind of discuss too is the interest in distributing and then people purchasing something because they got a you know a pirated copy of something and went oh this is cool maybe I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, part of, part of the whole issue is they've. Governments are kind of behind on what a digital good is really defined as because you can oh, yeah. endlessly copy, which is that you can go into NFTs and stuff like that. But basically, you could copy any 
digital content, there's always a way to do it. Versus a physical object, if you want to talk video games, if you can't, it's a really a pain in the ass to, at least, it's harder, arguably, to to make a physical copy, or or if you were to take that physical copy, you're you're arguably stealing it. It that's kind of we argue about the law. It gets it gets a little bit murky in terms of all these laws were written pre pre digital age, so it's kind of it's kind of murky at best, and at least in my opinion, there. And and we are driving a car that has been ran into the ocean, and we use stop gaps to make it float. <laughs> That that is actually a very good analogy. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue that actually. Yeah. What, what's interesting? Piracy solved. Well done, no. June. Is software. Uh, I, software. I wanted to touch a little bit on something that uh, before we we kind of change it a little bit is that part of this, as June said, was written for physicalized goods where. It's interesting now living in a country where I can buy a Louis Vuitton bag for six dollars if I wanted to. Um, now, a legit one? It costs. It, cost it says $6. Louis Vuitton <laughs> on it. That's, <laughs> that's a like copyright. Effectively, issue, it may as well be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But so is in a way, copyright question. is is piracy. Who's who's doing the pirating there? Is it the person who makes a legitimate purchase from the person who copied the original product? Or are both parties susceptible to the piracy thing? Uh, I would well, say it's mostly go. the manufacturer. Yeah. Because the they had to it. make that. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's what they're going after. But, and that's... but, if the, but ethically, I, th- I would say it's everyone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah even, ethically. Even, even if they even if they say yeah, if you knowingly buy it, that, that, knowing full a, well, it's yeah. a counterfeit version of of the product, but you're buying it because you know it looks like the Louis Vuitton or the or whatever. You're, you're still or part AirPods. of the game. Or AirPods. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because they they actually have two words in Thai, just for buying you know counterfeit goods. Uh, one is, <laughs> gay. Oh uh, wait. Okay. And the other one is Plon. Uh, and so what's the difference between those two? Uh, like, why would you use one? I don't know. Uh, one, one is probably more polite than the other. Uh, I only learned those words yesterday. Yeah. But but I found it interesting Applied that knowledge. they have... they That those are not Word of the day. words taken from English which a lot of words are, so it's that ingrained into basically culture here that piracy, in a way, is very rampant around. So, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, I, I found that interesting yesterday. I'm like, oh, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> so I think... Tim kind of brought up the the whole point of all of this is it, the ethics of all of it um, in in any sort of pirating situation because I mean we are not necessarily condoning it but I think we can all come up with a a situation where piracy might be the best or only way to get content. Right? I mean, Region whether it's locked. right or wrong. So, like, you're talking, if you go back in, in time with uh, pirating video games. I mean, what it, it was a rampant problem. The, I can't remember the, what's the shit that they put on all these all these games? What's that called? To anti-pir- anti-piracy software, whatever. Doesn't yeah, matter. That's safety lock, whatever. Yeah. Oh, and where they had DMCA, Starware, where it was burning up people's CD drives and stuff like that. There was all sorts of insanity in the early 2000s and mid 2000s mm. regarding, right. and it's still kind of around too today. Uh, but and yeah, we I'm all trying know to remember where this what is kind the, of going. You could argue Steam and and 
Spotify. DRM. It, uh, yeah, DRM. DRM is the term. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But you got services in terms of just digital media. You got Netflix, which uh, mm-hmm. you have Spotify. You have Steam, which arguably made piracy almost more of a pain. It made it more of a pain in the ass than it's actually actually worth. worth. Yeah, it changed so, it from having when you pirated something before, arguably, you would have the better version of it because you would have the version that ran better without all of the copy protection that was bogging the system down. You would be able to install it easier in many cases. And what changed everything is when... Sorry, I'm stealing a little bit of your thunder when steam and some of these other services came around and made it easier to legitimately purchase and download and more convenient rather than to it's, to pirate yeah and i've said it before and i'm not, i'm not the one who coined this phrase but piracy is just a service problem simple as that oh yeah if it is yeah. if it is easier more efficient cheaper and just safer all through all all those things to get content and if they provide a good product from a business standpoint, then piracy will go down. That, that's been proven, arguably, with, what, with the systems mm-hmm. that are out there right now. If you could spend, I guess it's $20 a month American for Netflix coming soon, which is they're, – they're trying to push the piracy up just a little bit, I think, on some <laughs> level. It's not a lot. Well, but between, between them and all of the different streaming apps that you have to mm. have now you have to mm. have peacock and abc and nbc and hulu. it's annoying yeah. hulu yeah when all Fox of a sudden and... when all of this all these get separated out it becomes two hundred dollars to get the same content yeah so then all of a sudden some points. people can't afford that i mean so people yeah. download a show that they can't get on the the one or two that they subscribe to so and it, and it kind of goes back to the the personal use argument mm-hmm. like if you're just taking it who are you hurting, really? I man, mean, obviously, got, you talk big business, but... Man. Along the s- same yeah. sort of lines, is things like Adobe. They have software like po- Photoshop. And Photoshop is not an easy program to learn how to use. So who in their right mind wants to spend what used to be like $1,000 or $600 or whatever it was to buy a software that you don't know if you're going to use properly? Or you're going to use maybe one or two premium features on it, but you're not going to use all the features on it. So yep. now they've gone to this expensive prescription method. And that, 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 yeah. that's, too, that's too expensive for the average home user. You know, who's going to well, use they, it? Well, they do it like... Sometimes sometimes they won't even use it in a month. Yeah. You know? Or they and, do like the drug dealer, like the first hit is free, gets you hooked on it, and now mm. you're, you're in the system now. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, and I, I, mean, I mean, in the past, I, I really do think that yeah, piracy is out there, but I, th- I think that when you can get a more current copy of, say, Photoshop or Lightroom, and you could get it as a pirated copy, it, I think that was almost le- led to to business because I don't think anybody who, I don't think most people who are in the in the business, the professional users of it, would ever want to keep with a pirated copy. They they would they would want all the all the updates. You know, they right, which a, is a, a, a service. Solid, reliable software. Yeah, not, not that's a, 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 not a, a service. Something that's going to delete their files. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a service way to solve a piracy problem. You get a, mm-hmm. you, If you can give a better product than the piracy, than the pirated copy, most arguably more people will go for this better better product in most cases. I mean, so. I, I, for, for, for Apple, now, one thing I have to say about them, but I know I know their business their business model is different. I love using Final Cut Pro, and I got I got a package for about a hundred a hundred dollars. Came with Final Cut Pro, uh, compressor. Um, I think it's called Motion, and that's lifetime upgrades, free up free upgrades. But mm-hmm. I know I know what their their business plan is. Well, you can only run it on a Mac, so you're gonna have to keep on buying Macs to to run it. So that's that's how they're that's how they're getting their money. Yeah. And that that's but similar it's, 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 to. It's, it's frustrating. I'd love to use Photoshop, but it's just I, I. If you if you want to pirate one, you're going to pirate a, 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 a copy that's like seven years old. Well, yeah, yeah heck, and it's... honestly, if you're looking for Photoshop, mm-hmm. get it on your Android or iPad. Oh, get it good. on 
one of the mobile OS is it's free. Yeah, they have it works um, really well. Hmm. There's a lot of Android apps that are cheaper, but if you buy the desktop version, it's more expensive. But both the apps do the exact same thing. Yeah, it's open soft open source software in general, actually, too. But mm -hmm. it's just kind of really weird that they're charging two different prices. Of why do I yeah. need to pay sixty dollars for this when you're offering it on the store for seven dollars? Well, and this could and be uh, you know there, there's professional Fusion, Fusion three sixty is a is a really good, really excellent CAD program, and their free version is basically free for hobbyists, and and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, it's it's limited, but it's not limited very much. It's limited more on how many open projects you can have going in the software. And if you wanted to use it, say, to design a circuit board, you can only do do a dual layer circuit board. You can't do a multi layer circuit board. So people learn how to use it, and then they move on. If they do it as a business, they do move on to the professional version. I mean, it's a completely different uh, way of going it than Adobe, but I I, I guess. It, every, yeah, every company has the right to decide on their own, but it's similar to well, air, airplane tickets, and it's also similar to like a, uh, Apple's version. In a way, is similar to you know the program that I use to edit this on DaVinci Resolve, where they know that the professional users are probably going to buy some of their crazy hardware, you know, for doing editing, and the people mm -hmm. that weren't going to buy it anyway might have some interest in it based off of the free software. Yeah, and they'll, and they'll remember when it, if it comes time to make money which software they know, which, which one they have learned, and they're going to stick with it because nobody wants that learning curve to, to move to another piece of software. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I, I wish more people would take the approach that CAD did with, okay, here's a free version. It has most of everything that you need. It's just if you're going to be a power user, you're going to have to pay us a lot more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing Microsoft does with uh, Visual Studio. There's the community version that does just about everything. And it really only prevents you from making a full-on, like, hey, look, I'm going to throw this in the store and make money off of it app. Well, I think yeah, Microsoft and... also did very, very good as well with its family version of... Uh, uh, I can't remember what they call it now, but you know what I mean. You, you get Word, you get Excel, you get oh, you Office get, 365. You get, you get like five accounts, so you can have five gigabyte on, on uh, one drive. I mean, they made that yep. they made that very affordable for people. So, like, why would you? For for most middle aged people, it's it's like crazy to if you need if you use those that software to, to pirate it. Mm -hmm. It's such a great right, deal, same with students and anybody at that point. Mm. It's a a better product in the bundle and the price and it's mm -hmm. and the features that it can give yep. easy to fix honestly yeah, one so that used to be free still is there's a three yeah. Version. yeah well and microsoft uh killed uh, I've, I've got a little nitpicky point with microsoft here they yeah, used to have a, i thought i was gonna trigger <laughs> they used to have this program called the home use program where if you worked for a company um, that utilized yeah. Microsoft Office in the company, you would get a very cheap version of Office for your computer. I, I utilized this when I was working for my previous job. And they have since gutted that applicant or that program when they switched to their monthly subscription model of Office, where you used to be able to get the entirety of office i think it i think it was like basically the student version so it had most of the apps that you really need um and it, i want to say it was like ten dollars uh for for everything and now they've changed it to you get 30 percent off of a subscription to microsoft 365 if your company uses microsoft 365 which our company did not because we didn't see the value in the subscription model for that. So that, to me, that was Microsoft definitely pushing me back away from their, from their office suite. Um, I have probably out of this group, I probably have the most unpopular opinion of hating subscriptions. 
um, uh, <laughs> to the core. But that I that I think I, I think that probably should be a different discussion episode. Uh, it's on the list. I, yeah. I'm 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 I'm, I'm depending on this on the subscription. I I do like the. I, I, I do like the Microsoft one because it gives my wife five terabytes and me five, and mm-hmm. and just just for that value alone, I, I think it I think it pays for itself. As compared to you know Google Drive and and, and so on, and and then again then I get the bonus of, of the of the other software that I wasn't using. I was using Google Docs before that because I didn't want to buy Microsoft, but but things like Adobe, which are Photoshop and stuff like that are so expensive for yeah. a monthly prescription or for a year prescription. It's just, it's just like, why would like, somebody who uses it once a couple of times a month ever, ever want to buy it or pay for it that way? Yeah, it's like seventy dollars a month for just hmm. the base uh, Photoshop. No, and if you get the whole Creative Suite, it's their base starts it? at twenty. Yeah. Okay, maybe that was. But, the but apps. you, yeah, I think you add. Yeah, you on, only get like <coughs> part of the apps. And there's like yeah. 90 apps, so. Yeah, yeah. but it's still but one but of those that, pros. Even that, because I, I know when I, I was a subscriber for a while, and there'd be times where it'd be a month or so, and I didn't wouldn't even use it, or then I'd use it once, and I think, what am I spending all this money for? You know, it just it, it really it really made me bitter about them. Yeah, and I think that's really aimed at you know larger businesses that have a per seat cost to mm. utilizing the app rather than rather yeah, than workflow advantage to, to yeah. use it too. M- oh. most most of these apps are not aimed to the the hobbyist who who is doing this non professionally. Uh, there there's a few companies and that's why, you know, I like black magic for what they're, they allow me to do. Not sponsored by mm. them, but I just like them. Um, it's amazing what they do. Yeah. We will if you want to, Black Magic. And like so. AutoCAD Fusion 360. You know our email address. Uh, yeah, yeah it, Fusion 360. It, I mean, these programs are making it so I, you know, nobody has a desire to pirate anything because they have a good product. Mm-hmm. And so another thing to add on to that is Part of their pricing is so high so they can get a tax write-off for having it so high when they donate their product to schools and such. Uh, Microsoft mm. does the same thing with mm. Windows. Mm. Oh, yeah, no, we oh, yeah, they're making X money amount of it. dollars, but okay, does it really cost you that much, though, to make it? Just copy and paste, essentially. Yeah, and then they donate it off. Oh, yeah, we got this tax write-off. Oh, we're at the max. Okay, we'll stop donating. That that's like the you know, the copy and paste the you wouldn't your background there, Colton, the as, you, as w- the which is says, becoming fuck you I would if I could. It's becoming yeah. the uh, interesting because we're we're at the point in technology where that's actually going to be possible. Like if you you know depending on three D printing mechanics, they're three D printing bridges, so. Pretty soon, 3D printing houses. Yeah, you'll be able to three D to download a car. So, and what makes and what adds an in interesting, yeah, and what makes that interesting is it's a a digital file turned into a physical object. That's what makes this one interesting mm-hmm. as from a piracy perspective. Because now you're adding the old school version of piracy. The, the thought of all oh, you can't steal a physical thing. But that, it, it's interesting. And then the add insult to injury to it is when the VCR first came out, they're like, wait, you can't copy stuff. And the crew's are like, we're not copying. We're time shifting. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, sure. I don't want to look dumb. Here you go. Uh, yeah, um, that... And that kind of bit him in the ass a little bit and also helped him out a little Loop bit. Loopholes. Silly loopholes. It's yeah, interesting. Well, it's, they never thought it all the way through. <laughs> that they got off on that loophole, but the uh, the rebroadcasting service that would allow you to oh, have yeah. What was it that you could have? It was in New York. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they had, because there were, you know, the public airwaves television, mm -hmm. um, where if you're in rural areas, you might still use this quite a bit. Uh, rather than having cable so or satellite, it was, you uh, had an antenna. internet feed. Yep, I'll let you no, describe it, a... it. Okay, so you literally would buy an antenna that was literally physically on the top of a building, and you owned that antenna. That antenna then was routed to a router that you had access to, and through internet magic, you could stream your TV from that antenna. So you could there get New is, York feed anywhere in the yep. world because Which, of, by the way, is the same stuff you can already do at home. Yep. Um, it's just the difference was you were getting it from yeah. New York rather than well, from Colorado or no, Nevada. Yeah, it kind of goes into to region-locked yeah. areas, which is they, they sell a product for that now. I can't remember what they call it now. No. Well, Tableau. Uh, I, I was trying to get to this point, and then all of you jumped oh, in. Oh, go, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, if you, if you want to do it right now, t Tableau is awesome. Um, you should definitely go check out their stuff. But, <laughs> um, so you, you bought it through a company, and the fact that the company managed it and the fact that you didn't physically manage it was what was causing a lot of the problems. Um, but since that information would have to technically be copied to be sent over the Internet, which is what everything is, is copied before it's sent over to the Internet, it's always going to be copied. That's what computers do. Yeah, so putting something, into, like putting something into RAM is copying it. Yes. Putting putting something through... watching a video over the airwaves is copying it technically yes. on the screen. There's, but there's still a product that, that that does that. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, it's a slip in my slip in my no, it, it it doesn't use radio waves, but you basically connect to a box in your home and you can switch switch the channels and watch watch all the TV from your cable feed remotely. Oh, that was big in the. 90s, wasn't it? Is that the thing I'm thinking of? My mom had an RF one. Oh, it's that it's did still that. around. But yeah, you're basically just duplicating your the signal that you're already receiving that you're already paying for. It's just going through another source mm -hmm. um, yeah. than directly to the TV. Yeah, that's a weird can of worms because if you if you argue that that version of copy, then we're all relegated to analog technology and anybody who is watching this podcast basically yeah, we well, don't it transmit is stealing, analog. stealing from yeah. twill yeah that's we God, like you. that's a weird archaic this, this I think is the example of the people who who did the ruling on this not really understanding the ramifications of this ruling based on current technology Slingbox. Sorry. Oh, Slingbox. Say that again. Oh, yeah. Sling. Uh, they went legit, too. That's what's interesting. Mm -hmm. Sling TV is amazing. Uh, sorry. It, I just had remembered it. Carry on, Cody. Sorry to interrupt me there. Uh, I, I forget where we were, where we were going with this. Um, well, I mean, I can... I have an, an interesting thought experiment for you guys if you'd like to think about it this so i have come up with four scenarios from an ethical piracy standpoint some of them are real life scenarios that are happening right now in 2022 and some are just things that just happen and actually june gave me the idea for the fourth one so i just had three now i have four if you're taught so let's go vpns and one of the big mm. selling points of a VPN, if you look at any fucking ad for a VPN, if you don't have an ad blocker, is you can watch content from other countries that is region locked. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that piracy? Technically, yes. Because, because unintended you're not use. Viewing the content the way it was designed to be viewed. I'm gonna but go is it ethical no. to do it on some oh, level? Oh, fuck yes. Eth ethical? <laughs> Absolutely, it's ethical to do it. Because the whole purpose, then we get into the design of the internet, and then the purpose of the internet behind the creator of the internet. So technically, and you're talking you're censorship using, and by, other interesting By censoring, concepts. you are using the internet in a way that it wasn't designed. So now we're going to be at war between different 
technologies here, and I'm gonna go with this one rather than this one. Your so puny just little... to clarify real quick, um, are we talking about using the ad blocker on the VPN or just bypassing region blocks? Just bypassing, bypassing regions. Bypassing region blocks. This yeah. you're right. watching a show that's in UK that you cannot get on the reg. If you're using Netflix, oh, I you got can't a get. One for you. Or one accessing your bank. Is it is it is it, a, is it ethical for somebody in Russia to to watch? Uh, no. Watch watch news and other sources that aren't censored by their government. Oh, I got I got a better one. You know, <laughs> watching the Kansas City Chiefs. Why you live in Kansas? Yeah, the NFL in general, oh, and that's a good for point. Any any major region game bullshit in that like state, that. You can't well. watch it online, even though you have a subscription to ESPN, and they're broadcasting it. No, you cannot watch it. So I'm yeah, paying for I, a service I, that I can't use. There, yeah. There's the technicality version of it, which, uh, yeah, it would probably constitute as piracy, but the ethicality portion of that is that the your that these companies are circumventing the whole purpose of what is the internet and what is meant to be a global online society and and yeah. attempting to segment that then yeah ethically gets gray area yeah. at best it, I, mean, I, I don't or, think it's actually illegal at all because you're still getting the ads that would normally be i'm, I'm just going to go with the kansas city chiefs you're still getting the ads that would normally be playing going through there everyone's right. getting paid it's now just here, you're not going the, to the game here's the con here's the caveat of all of that you can mm -hmm. get i mean I kind of aware you can get local ads for say the Denver Broncos or whatever. You can get stuff that is specific mm -hmm. to Colorado on that on that feed. But if and I go, go to over, Kansas City, that ad is that ad is designed Germany. to not go to you. It's designed to go to someone else. If I take a vacation city. to Germany, turn on the TV and I'm watching the TV, those ads don't apply to me. They do because you might be in okay. I am not going to be buying insurance in Germany while this I'm there on vacation. This is the best German pizza. Yeah, but you might be in exactly the city. come exactly. to us. Exactly, you might be buying Wait. like I'd get Thai advertisements when I was still in the U.S. and I would VPN into like if I VPNed into Thailand and there would be you know juice or something that I could get at Seven Eleven here, and which if you're living here or taking a vacation here and if i turn on my vpn to connect to my bank back in the u.s i am no longer getting those juice ads to go to 7-eleven i'm getting an ad for pop tarts which don't really right exist here so <laughs> yeah you're right it's, it's interesting a lot more conversation than i expected on that one boys interesting all right <laughs> so <laughs> kind of change it up a little bit. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, all right. <laughs> so <laughs> one, of, one of the things... Mark on that one. <laughs> right. Yeah, we didn't really answer it, but that's fine. It's, <laughs> it's all we are don't condone it. We're just talking about it. So one of the big stories that's happening, partly with, with digital video games in general, is the preservation of, of games and... And content from the mm -hmm. past for future generations. So Nintendo yeah. and and Sony, they both recently shut down their oh. their stores, their digital stores for I think the Wii U, the 3DS, 3DS, and the PS and the, for the for the Sony PSP PS, and PS Vita. PSV and PS Vita. So technically, so those. Um, you can still technically buy the the physical, physical copies cartridges. of of these games. It's not as easy as it used to be, arguably, but you still technically can, with some some caveats. But you cannot buy anything from the digital store anymore. They, they shut it down. <coughs> Is it ethically okay to pirate at that point? If Fuck if yes. you Ethically, definitely. Yep. That's that's this... one of my biggest gripes, and I was actually going to talk about it last week and didn't, um, is is the fact that, okay, I, I have my original Nintendo Game Boy, 
and a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy Advance. All of those consoles, I have all of those games still readily available. If I had, if today uh, I were to lose access to the Nintendo Store on my Switch, anything that I've downloaded, I couldn't play. It has to reach back home and go, hey, is this a legal copy? Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, great. Now I'll open up and play. It's DRM shit, basically. Yeah, this is where yep. we get to piracy to circumvent DRM, which actually causes more of an issue than the problem that it solves. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting, weird gray area with this. This, this is a good point, Colton. Uh, because so, these companies want you, obviously, with the shift of closing their old product, they want you to move to their new product. So, yep. in a way, it, the ethics on it are very gray. As far as the preservation, as far as the Internet Archive goes, I, I would say that th I... Ethically, I think that those are necessary. We, Strangely enough, we have actually lost a lot of technology, a lot of old media due to just losing. And so, because you can lose things off of the Internet where no computer has these anymore. So I think it's important to, to actually archive this. So, yes, yep. as far as a personal level... Uh, it gets it gets weirder it, it definitely gets weirder for me so i like if you add in emulation and stuff like that because this is a this is kind of caveat of the same of the same story because it's nintendo who are notorious for keeping iron an iron grip on their ips and their content which legally they have a right to do because technically they are the they disney own it. of the game world world exactly so I don't know if you guys know, have you guys heard about that new Switch game that came out called Pokemon, I'm going to say this wrong, Arceus? Arceus? Whatever? Arceus. Arceus, I, the open world Pokemon that. game that is blowing people away. It's so different and cool, which I, sounds interesting. It's so good. there's a story that came out right before the game was released There that a pirated copy of, of the game... And this also happened with this has happened with actually this is a big problem Nintendo's having. It's happened their mm -hmm. games are getting pirated early. Early copies are being pirated and then sent to emulators on the PC and are able to run better on PC hardware than on Switch hardware. <laughs> yep. Hmm. Is it ethical? If you could get a better technically, or you could argue that it at least in terms of an experience you're getting a better product it. from the emulated pirated stuff. So from an, yeah, like Tyler said, from an ethical standpoint, if you bought the game for Switch and then downloaded the version for PC, I do not see the issue because you have paid for a copy of the game. And as long as only... only yeah, I, I would like to add in it a quick addendum and I'll let you have it again. As long as only one person is using that at a yes. time. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's still like, predicated on the fact that you made a, a transaction with the provider, technically. You yeah. bought a copy. Yeah. may not be the specific oh. one, but it's still technically the same game. So it's The same thing with music. I mean, I'd like many, to have words. I can't tell you how many times I've, I've, had, I've had cassettes, I've had CDs, mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've had LPs, vinyl. The same friggin' thing. <laughs> that's, right. That's why. You know. well, well, How many then times we to... have we all bought Skyrim? Have... Yup. See, and this this was going to be my fourth point. Oh, I got. So before you go on to the fourth one, go on. Sorry. Um, so you had with Nintendo, and they're yeah really horrible with copyright. Disney does the same thing with their vault. Right mm. now, if you wanted to buy the original Lion King. You cannot. You cannot buy the original Bambi, Bambi, the original Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, 101 Dalmatians, the Jungle Book. You can't get any of those at all. This weird you artificial scarcity. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, that one I don't think is morally right for them to do, but again, they hold the copyright. They and own, they, somehow legally, they have the right to it. 75 years plus the life of the author <laughs> was a good time period I do not understand. I think we should maybe shrink that down to maybe four years or ten years, somewhere around where patents are at. That's actually a, a future topic of mine, the, the patent system and how Disney has arguably thrown their weight around to keep uh, cause technically like Mickey Mouse is supposed to yeah. be public domain now. So yeah. they're yeah. It's a whole you should interesting be able to be teaming up with all sorts of people just like Frankenstein. It's a or, fascinating or I remember fascinating story. Yeah, yeah. Or Happy Birthday is another one. That you yeah, there was a Star Citizen had a live stream that got <laughs> shut down huge live stream that got shut down because they sang happy birthday to somebody yeah yeah that was a derived work that was then also later determined oh we don't know who actually created this work or not um who um sold it which is also funny from the sense of it's it's a performed thing which is a whole another aspect of that so oh yeah it was a recreation of the work yeah it wasn't stealing the original work it's a recreation of the work so you guys mentioned Skyrim. This is the fourth point. So does owning a digital work give you permission to pirate other forms of media of the same work? Specifically of the same work. And you now there's going to be a caveat here. So you have, you have, let's just say Skyrim, because that's a good one. There's Skyrim, Skyrim Remastered, and there's probably more. But those are the two. We'll just say those two. You, if you own the original Skyrim... You bought a copy, legit, back in the day with the whatever the first one was 10, 15 years ago. Do you have the right to pirate on a different system? Like VR? Okay. Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah, VR would be the third no, one, VR by the way. Different. So I would say as far as, like, versions of the game, because there's the original and then special edition mm -hmm. and then VR, like... I would say if you bought the VR version, you should get, you should be able to get Backwards either compatible. the other. That's an interesting concept. Yes. I've never thought about that. But yeah. I would say that person who bought the original Skyrim, you only paid for the work in this version. You don't get the extras. Okay, so how about this? Another caveat, because these are fascinating. I'm interested to see what you guys think. GTA, the, uh, fuck, the, the trilogy, GTA 3, GTA San Andreas, GTA Vice City had a release recently, a port that, a remastered port that was worse, arguably worse than the original game. Hmm. Oh my God. It's a, it was a whole what? scandal. It's, it's seen as a cash grab from Rockstar. It's a big, big deal. So... So it kind of goes, I guess, Brandon Cutter, you answered yeah, it. Yeah, Age buy, of Empires is doing the same thing with Age of Empires 2, actually. We're, if we're you buy a, a remastered of... version, but, and you haven't bought the original, if you bought a remastered version of the game, but it is a worse experience, you find out it is a worse experience than the original game. By, and a significantly worse experience in terms of glitches, compatibility, stuff like that. Like, it's, it's almost game-breaking bugs. Do you have the right to pirate the original at that point? Hell yeah. Again, yeah, we're, same we're kind gonna of thing. argue Boston ethics. We're not arguing work. rights. We're arguing ethics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. We're not talking legal <laughs> stuff, because obviously don't pirate stuff, but pirate stuff. <laughs> <laughs> just just We're not financial it. advisors, we're not legal <laughs> advisors. But we're gonna tell you our fucking opinions on this shit. Yeah, yeah. So No, I I'm with I'm with track on this i mean i, I, mean, I would yeah, say I would... it's it would be a good idea if you're remastering something you're using the old assets anyways but you should probably go ahead and license the old assets and thus be charging the customer for the old assets and if you're so have access to the old assets you should be i'll even throw another let's throw another caveat a remake a reboot a re a re Remaster. Remaster. So modern not, not cinema just a... is basically screwed. 
Well, so yeah. Homeworld did a remaster that was actually quite nice. Quite faithful, too. And arguably, they yeah. didn't use any original assets, did they? That is a, yeah. arguably a completely different game. I guess it's the it's, same rule, though. It it's the same game. The same game. It's the same the, game. It uses the World War... Uh, Jesus, World War. Homeworld no. 2 engine um, to do both, but then they added 4K, 8K, or 16K. It was something just ridiculous. There's lots uh, of Ks in there. Into it. They, they did a good job on it. Yeah. But I think you're you the remastered one, you still good. had the original. Yeah, actually, they so, did do that well with that one. I, yeah, yeah StarCraft did a good the job. same thing. Is, is what you're asking is... So if you buy the newer ver like if you buy Spider Man three, does that give you access to Spider Man? No, no, no. That is that, those okay. are complete. No, no. It. Yeah. You really kind of spoiled my thunder when you figured out <coughs> backwards compatibility. But that's fine. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> I am past it. I am centered. I am better now. We're all so, stealing it, Bolton's thunder. Yeah. If you're using the old assets, <laughs> you should theoretically have access to the old game as well. Yep. But if you're using a completely new assets, but every story, characters, audio is all the same. Well, I guess you're still using the same assets with audio. So new audio, too. Good. But the I story, mean, go gameplay assets, bas yes. is basically the same. Okay. So I would argue that's probably – this is probably the best way to to handle a situation where, like, I can't get a game legally or I paid for a product that arguably isn't – isn't good enough for to my liking it's it's situational based i would argue yes it's you gotta you like gotta think of all the life, factors yeah. yeah it's true it's just like anything else it's it's yeah you could argue with the law but with the digital age and the way the internet is arguably supposed to be it's all about what kind of if what kind of responsibility do you have for preservation, for ex an experience, for the value, for your money, it's it first. Do it's, no you just got to think about these kind of things. And there's also all those emulators that that are out there. You know, these emulators yep. for hardware that you mm -hmm. can't really mm -hmm. buy anymore. And uh, you know, I, I, like you say, Nintendo was was a strong one on trying to stop. Emulators oh yeah, that, that's that's yeah. arguably their, their biggest old, security uh, flaw is the fact old, that they yeah. keep. Their games keep their coming games. out early, and, and mm -hmm. in their old games too, they're just played better on modern hardware, and they're doing a better product, and that's the biggest but problem they're having. So it's fascinating. But 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 like you say, there's there's stuff that's not available anymore, and people sometimes people like to go way back. And, and you're talking preservation for for or the authentic or the or the authentic yeah. experience yeah. of using original hardware, mm -hmm. and it's. Yeah, it's situational. Like, like That's my argument in every game or something like that. You know. Yeah. Yep. Here, here's here's my take on it, and this this has been my take since since I was a wee little lad, is that wh who who or what am I harming by what am what I'm doing? If if I am actually or if we are actually taking money away from a developer by what we are doing. So, for instance, if we opened up a shop to resale stuff that we bought in bad faith or that we didn't buy in bad faith, that that's a problem. That, this, is, this is where my ethics come in. If, if I purchase something and that thing doesn't work but I can find a different system that it does work on it, and I've purchased this already, by all means, I'm not taking anything away from the person because it was a product that was not delivered that I paid for. Uh, this, this has been my guiding light as far as ethics. To well, steal I don't think or not any, to when, it, when it comes, yeah, that, that's our ethics, and I don't think even most of these companies would ever come after an end user in a case like that, anyways. Yeah. So, so we're 
Really Use your judgment. It's only people. only an ethical thing. Be smart. Uh, Regardless, I, I would be say smart anyways. Use a VPN. Louis Rossman has it said that the best. You can have as many vacation days as you want. Just keep in mind, if all of you guys take vacation days, you're not going to have a job when you come back. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, if everyone pirates, you're not going to have any product. Mm. Yeah, that, that's a very good But at the same time, point. go take vacation days when you need to. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Uh, Jude is the <laughs> king of Rossman. analogies for this episode. Okay. He's good for wrapping it. <laughs> Hence the silver can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Some might say it's a lining. In looks like we're right about at the hour mark, boys. Uh, <laughs> give or take a few minutes, I'm sure. Do, what do you think? Yeah. Have we wrapped up piracy? I think so. To our best of our knowledge, enough. I think it, it's I in think a nice little bow. Into it's a muddy um, milkshake. Yeah, especially <laughs> when you get into copyright law and. Uh, a bunch of other stuff. It gets really weird where, to rephrase oh, what we've already hashed on, is the the legal part of this was not written for modern technology. Um, and it's, it's a lot of consumers having to protect themselves by using piracy not to try to harm the company that's involved, but to to actually receive what they paid for. Yeah. Now, th yeah. there, there are some malicious actors out there um, who are absolutely doing something wrong. You know, we get into the, the Louis Vuitton bags for $6, which is, which it's a different societal thing here of why that is with, you know, wanting to appear, you know, appear wealthy and stuff so, but that that's a totally different thing but as far as like the the digital side of things yeah it's yeah it, it, it's Yar. <laughs> exactly Yar, exactly motherfucker. save me from myself please Yar. um well they got and doom running on an esp32 definitely not the original intent but it works mm -hmm. Which you okay. cannot. The SP32 is. It's a really tiny, 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 tiny microcontroller. It's but you cannot purchase small. Doom. Doom is not available for sale for that platform anyway. Um, yes, on the tiny no, microcontroller. Doom, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the most popular platform in the world. Or TI-85. Yep. Yeah. Can't so, I mean, for at that. some points, I mean, innovation happens a lot and usually when you need necessity there might be a quote in there someplace yeah <laughs> but that i would argue is for a better podcast <laughs> better? better podcasters better smarter people oh. where, where could we oh. find whoa, whoa, people whoa, whoa, whoa. and on on we that have a combined note. iq of above 150 <laughs> god i would hope yeah Collectively, sure yeah, between the five of us, we have an IQ of 150. <laughs> Add us all up. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. I don't have enough fingers and toes. <laughs> Use your friends. <laughs> friend. Lean on the company you're stealing from. <laughs> oh, God. All right. And with that, Colton, where can we find you? My name is Colton Rover. You can find me. On all the platforms legally, of course, as Seeker4761. I also stream pretty regularly on twitch.tv slash Seeker4761. And I am also a contributor to thetechpirate.net, where you can find your news, reviews, tips, gripes, and all this other crap about the tech world on that site. Go there. Check it out. Boom. This. Tim, what about you? Well, I'm on uh, Facebook, Instagram as Our Tie Journey. And YouTube is our Thai journey. Don't skip those ads. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have my one note up. I don't know who's next. So Cody I just pick somebody. Uh, I, I I am it apparently. <laughs> I am Cody Stratman, also known as Psycho Nitrous. Uh, I am on Steam. I am currently playing. 
uh, I started playing Scrap Mechanic, actually, which is fun. I, yeah, I also last night. Yeah, I started... I've been trying to play Imperion with varying degrees of annoyance. Um, yeah, I, I might actually write an article for the Tech Pirate on my experience between Imperion and Space Engineers, uh, just because those are two interesting games, which I purchased both of them very legally because they were easy to purchase and it was the right thing to do. So just On more. Steam. Yeah, yep. Also not okay. a sponsor, but also please. Not a sp- Valve. Gabe, oh, fuck yeah. We'll, we'll, the, we'll, we'll take your Steam Deck money any time, any day of the week. Any yeah, fucking yeah, day of the week. Theme Just let that. me buy it in Thailand. <laughs> let me buy it. I ordered it. <laughs> I just buy, let buy. me buy it. I can't yeah. pirate it yet. Damn it. Not uh, yet. Uh, <laughs> all right. June. June. Yes. Um, I'm June Bug. Um, I'm on the internet. Excellent. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> well, I am Brandon Vader, uh, also known as Captain Dracanish. You can find me on the techpirate.net, uh, where surprisingly we haven't talked about piracy, but maybe we should. And uh, you can also find me on YouTube as the Tech Pirate, and then I'm still working on getting all of my social media changed to Captain Drac or Captain Dracanis. And yeah, eventually you can find me there. But thanks for joining us on this episode of This Week I'm Learning. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube at This Week I'm Learning. For you social media peeps out there, you can find us on Twitter at This Twill. If you'd like to contact us, you can, of course, send an email to twill at the techpride.net, and we will see you all next week. Yeah. The best, you mateys, yo ho. Don't steal this, please. Don't steal Push off. <laughs>
Mm-hmm. Yep. And I would argue at that point, if it's more <laughs> that much effort, it's like you've earned it. You've earned the, the YouTube <laughs> video. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of a cool. weird you, you region can, lock. And you, yeah. It's not like you're going to sue somebody like that when they have no money anyways. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Mean, technically it's piracy, country. but I would say go for it because I mean, get the information out there to the masses and let the masses decide. The unwashed masses, China? as they say. And, and maybe it will get them better internet because more people will know how to mm-hmm. download RAM. <laughs> download extra oh RAM. God. Hey, that has Hyper been speed. done. Technically, yeah. you can download more RAM. It's just it's more of allocation into a hard drive instead. And or RAM compression software, which is really weird. Well, that used to be a thing. You, you, you'd download and cut. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Oh, and we forgot to talk about the... Um, Using a ad blocker to stop viruses and malware. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. I should have. Yeah, that, yeah, one, that yeah, opens up a whole totally other can legit. of worms. Yeah, that's a that's, whole that's different legit. part of the internet. Yep. <laughs> it's fine. I think Minus I think we all agree on that's okay. Your side. That's fine. See, that's, that's what's web going 1. on. Shit. That's Linus is giving you tech tip videos and also viruses at the same time so you keep watching his tech tip videos. Mm. To be fair, he did infect this he to did infect foul. this podcast to talk about his take on something. Ah. God damn it. That itself is God virus. damn it. Damn you Linus. You can send us a pillow. You. I guess we have I a want Canadian, a but you other Canadian, <laughs> you, you Canadians, you yes. Can't trust them. Yeah. Too many leaves. Them and their flannel, <laughs> their maple, their delicious, delicious maple. Letter Kenny. Ah, oh, so good. To be fair. Oh, Letter Kenny. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> to be fair. That's one thing I got. I, get, I can't get my Letter Kenny because I can't watch Hulu. Oh, even, yeah, that's an, even well, through shit. About... Yeah, that's see, you're even a citizen. Oh. Wait, are you? A, I can't you are even a citizen, get a prescription. Right? I can't even get a pre- prescription. Huh. Because in order to get Hulu, I, I need a, a U.S. credit card. That's a whole wow. interesting concept of the region lock mm-hmm. thing. That, yeah, that's yeah. one of them that, like, everything else, like, okay, we're kind of bypassing stuff, but this one's legitimately... Huh. I wonder if there's any way yeah. to do it through crypto. Or if they... Probably not, no. because Steam... No. Yeah, because I had the same weird issue with, you know, trying to get my Steam account here, which then... I realized a week ago backfired on me when I now when I did my order for the Steam Deck that now is probably gonna be void when it finally comes out because Thailand is not available for this for whatever why yeah uh, if you want me to order one I will mail it to you I was gonna say you could order it here then we I mean, yeah, yeah, no, that's no, wrong. I'm, uh, I mean, technically, that's <laughs> bypassing another. Don't do that. Yeah, true. I guess. I guess yeah. if I were to do is that, that the region that is a region lock kind of physical thing. You better yes. to have somebody send carry it, it here because you're going to be paying a lot of duty and tax. Well, on it. well S- send it here and I'll slap a pirate like sticker your, like on it. Like your cell phone. Send or. send it here. I'll I will make sh- I will quality assurance the thing for like a <laughs> two nah, years. It's under, so. under forty thousand baht. I I should be fine. It's under forty thousand. Which is what hit me on the on the phone was that it was over yeah, forty thousand. They, they you are an importer exporter, so legally it's fine. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll use that on all. Yeah, I got Alaska Airline miles. So I'll Ooh. somebody come <laughs> fly here. to the states to get a. Yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> bring awesome. me this, please. That that is called commitment to yeah. a craft there. <clears throat> Anybody in the coffee group goes back. You can you can ask them if they if you can order it and ship it to them out of there. See, is that yeah. is that getting around region locks right there? Uh, it mm. is, but uh, comments down below. Ethically good. 